Um, okay, so I have a fun job, but I'm going to try to do here in the space of about 30, 40 minutes, um, whatever we have, is I'm going to try and summarize kind of everything that's happening in cybercrime today, give you some predictions on where cybercrime is going next in the future, and I'm going to factor in some time for questions and get one or two demos in, all possibly in 30, 40 minutes. So let's see how that works, right? Um, so joking aside, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the three biggest trends that I consider in cybercrime today. And I'm also going to give you five kind of predictions of the near future of where we expect cybercrime um, to go to. So if you, if any, actually anybody attend Decode already this morning in the first session, where it was just on stage? Nobody? Perfect. That means I can reuse all this life. <laughs> um, so now joking aside, some of this will be things I've talked about downstairs, but some of it is new, especially for this um, audience. So let's get right into it. I'm going to give you a couple of figures just to get your brains kind of thinking um, early this morning. So the first of these is 2.7 billion US dollars. So think anyone know what this refers to, right? So with this, I'll just tell you what this refers to. What it refers to is it's the number of reported financial losses um, to the FBI for cybercrime in 2018. 2.7 billion US dollars. But the actual real thing is much worse than that because that's, first of all, that's only the United States. Um, and obviously it's a very big country, but it's still one of 200 countries worldwide. And secondly, it only accounts for known cases of cybercrime, right? So let's do a little thought experiment here. Hands up anybody here who has been a victim of cybercrime? Nobody. Okay, right. Let's try, actually, it's an easier question. Hands up of any of you have at any stage had your computer antivirus software, which I'm going to assume is the world famous term, by the way. Um, but you had your computer antivirus software at some stage had a pop up telling you you had malware on your machine. Yes. Anybody? Hands up? Much more people. Right. So all of you, when you think about it, had your computer accessed without your permission and an attacker installed a tool on it that let them have complete control of that computer and do anything that they wanted with it. So, one more time again. Hands up, anyone in this room has been a victim of cybercrime, right? Everybody, right? Most people have. Has any of you reported it to the police? No. no. Nobody does, right? Uh, for the sake of argument, I've done it once, right? So I've done it one time. So in a room like this, I am the one person who's the equivalent to that 2.7 billion in reported losses, because I actually told the police about it, in my case. So you now you get an idea of the sheer scale of that, but when you compare it to all the unreported stuff that's out there as well. So think of this um, going a little bit further than this. We're living at the moment in a kind of changing world when it comes to cybercrime attacks today. So in the early days of cybercrime attacks, we're talking like 80s through about mid 90s, it was all carried out by humans. Right? So humans would attack servers or computers or whatever it could be. Then in you know, the mid-90s, for about the next 20, 25 years, it was very much carried out by code, or malware, if you like. So you would have malware that was distributing um, computer worms to create botnets and so on, and automate as much of this as they possibly could. And this is really the world that today's security software was designed to defend against, right? this, this code base. But now we've come full circle again, and once more you're actually defending it against humans, or smart human attackers in this case. And they might use malware, but it's just one tool that they will use. And if the malware didn't work, they will try social engineering, or they will try phishing attacks, or phone somebody up, or whatever they need to do to get onto the actual network. And if you only defend against the, the malware, the tool, it's not going to work very well. It's a bit like having a, like a riot shield, right? And it's something that's designed to deal with like baseball bats and hammers, and then somebody turns up with a gun, and you're in serious trouble. So the second thing here is, we're now living in a world where we are, there's living in a world where we have second golden age of elite level hackers, right, today. So going a bit further, second number of, of three numbers I'll give you just to, to wake our brains up. This time it's three billion. So this one refers to is the number of records that were breached in the Yahoo data breach. It's a couple of years old, but still considered the largest data breach today. And that, what this meant um, that this attack, some attackers had gained access to the private data of approximately one third of the world's population, which is huge when you think about it, right? And you might think, okay, when data breaches happen, people can reset their accounts and everything goes back to normal. But there's some data that exists in data breaches you can't reset, 
So things like your date of birth, your address, your telephone numbers, those are things that they're at least difficult to change, and some of them you have them for life, like your date of birth. You can't change those type of details. And in main news, there's a lot of other breaches that have happened since, like my fitness pal, Cambridge Analytica, my heritage, a whole bunch of other ones. But if you add all them together, they still don't come anywhere close to this. And these data breaches are, in my opinion, the largest risk to consumers today, because they're largely kind of outside of our control, right? You can secure your own laptop or computer. Or, ooh, let's go a second. Speaking of securing computers, there we go. All right, we're back again. So, um, what was the thing? Yes. So, when, what I do when I actually, um, when I'm signing up for a website, so if I'm buying something off a site or a shop or something online, I will normally actually give fake details myself. So, I'll give them, they don't need, in most cases, to know my date of birth or my address unless they need them to ship something to me, right? So, I can happily give them fake details. But if the site is something like a government site or like a very personal nature site, something like a dating app, you kind of have to give it your personal details. That's, that's how those, those sites work. So you don't have any choice in those cases. And I also strongly believe that in the future, data breaches are going to get much worse for a couple of reasons. So look at these for a second. So what all these have in common. So first of all, they're all mobile applications. Uh, secondly, they're all uh, very popular here in the Philippines, uh, which is not surprising because everything on the internet is popular here in the Philippines. <laughs> right? um, I was reading a report actually in the flight on the way over that you guys um, have the most time of any country online compared to everything else, right? So you're number one in that. Um, I'd like to point out, by the way, Ireland are still number one in alcohol consumption, which I'm not sure if that's both a good thing or a bad thing, but we're kind of semi-proud of it and semi-disgusted with it. So the majority of, the reason I point this out is most of the data for each of these apps is not really on your device, it's in the cloud, right? So what that means is that cyber attacks have to evolve. Because as more and more of our data moves to the cloud and away from your endpoint, your like phone or your laptop, or whatever the case may be, the attackers have no choice. They have to go where the data is if they want to monetize it. And that means more data breaches, which again, as I said, is kind of things outside of your control. But also there's another issue that comes with data breaches. And for that, I'm going to show just a quick demo. So this is like demo gods. Let's see if this work. Um, so we're going to go over to this. I don't know if I have a microphone. Here we go. Perfect. So, what I'm going to show here is this particular thing here, which looks like a pretty picture. There's a whole bunch of dots. Dots are cool, right? So um, let's just magnify it a bit, and we will do it like this. So what this actually is, if I zoom in, apart from it being a pretty image, we zoom in here, you'll start seeing some names you recognize. So you see uh, PH, you see a whole bunch of Philippine cities, and so on. And then if I went out further, some of this, the red in this case is locations. Blue is email addresses and green is people. So I won't zoom in on them for a reason. What this actually is, is I took the, has anyone heard of a site called Ashley Madison? Right? The Ashley Madison was a dating site, or where dating means you want to date people who are already married. Right? So uh, it was for affairs. And that site got breached back in 2015. So 2015 is already like four years ago, but I want to point out why this is still an issue today. So what I did was I simply took that's a public database, it's publicly posted on the internet by hackers, and I took out of that the data for just the people with a Philippines address in there, and grafted it. So we have their locations, to the people, to their email addresses. The reason why this is a problem is I could then simply take one of the email addresses, so if I just go, let's see, can we do this live? So we select all the email addresses, like this, and I go right click, and I am going to uh, take each of them, so I'm going to use a site called halabeanpwned.com, which just checks that any of those exist in other data breaches, right? not just the Ashley Madison one, but other ones as well. So we can set that going, and this will start populating in real time. So what it's doing here is taking each email address and checking does it exist in other breaches around the place. And this is going to take a little while to run, but it starts graphing it out, and you can see, for example, here's some new one up here, and it'll keep going for a while. Uh, the internet connection here is a little bit slow, so I'll do a case of like here's what we did earlier. So we just go, yeah. So this is the whole thing graphed out. And what I want to point out here is zooming out again a bit, and we just make the image like this. So it's all more centralized. All of those email addresses, so the email addresses are the light blue here, and then the dark blue are other domains that have been breached in. And when we zoom in, you see like canvas.com, MySpace, Media Online, Adobe, a whole bunch of other ones. 
which means if you get one breach of your data, because people use the same email address for everything to do online, they often use the same password for everything to do online, or at least variations, right? So people might have like super strong password MySpace. What do you think their super strong password for Netflix is? Right, a super strong password for Netflix, right? So it's easily guessable. So one breach doesn't just affect you on that site, it affects you on every single site that you access for most people. The other thing I could do here is, as well as finding what other breaches, I could do something much, if you were from an attacker point of view, I took each of those email addresses, and what I've done here is I've just said, okay, for those email addresses, show me the um, social network profiles for those people. So if you're an attacker, you can now take something very sensitive like Ashley Madison data, which obviously people who've had affairs or at least interested in having affairs, and you can then map them out to their like Foursquare accounts, Skype accounts, uh, Facebook accounts, and so on, right? And what you could simply do is we could say, for example, let's take the uh, Facebook users here. Where's Facebook? FB user in Facebook, right? Let's grab them, cut and paste them into a new tab, just for a second here. So we've got 55, I'm deliberately not zooming in on names here, right, because that's not the point of the whole thing. But what I can simply do is say, okay, for each of those people, let's get, my family members are a bit mean, let's get their friends. So we get each of their friends. So if you were an attacker, you simply take a breach like this, you get, first of all, map the email addresses to all the Facebook accounts, you then map all of the Facebook accounts out to all of their friends, and then those are the people you extort them with. You say, all of these, 200 and whatever that is, 56 people here that are your friends are about to get an email with all the things you ever did on the Ashley Madison site or whatever the other breach is. So this all takes all of about two, three minutes to do. And you can see how quickly you can scale up a breach into something that people can be extorted about four years after the fact, right? So breaches last for a very, very long time is kind of what I want to point out here. So let's stop that going. Now it'll stop itself eventually. Right. So back over to our slides, here we go. Okay, so hopefully you get an idea now where breaches are not just the breach itself, but the larger ecosystem that kind of goes around it. So one last figure, just uh, for, for today's threats. Um, this one is 8.4 billion. So what 8.4 billion refers to is the number of internet connected devices online by the end of 2018. And this is expected to grow exponentially um, over the next couple of years. So that means a couple of things. That means as of last year, um, there was more internet connected devices on the internet than there were humans for the first time. It also means a couple of other things. Uh, so firstly, when all of those machines become sentient and form Skynet like in Terminator movies, we're all dead. But secondly, it means that everything in our world is getting more and more connected. And if things are connected, they can be hacked. So we already, if you think of things like 